Once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. Consume you, it will, as it did Obi-Wan's apprentice. Vader, is the dark side stronger? No. 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 But the busier, more seductive. But how am I to know the good side from the bad? You will know when you are calm, at peace, passive. Your father failed to act. The man had a gun. Did that stop you? I've had training. The training is nothing. The will is everything. The will to act. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest, the greatest edition of Nick's Nonfiction. You're here with your host, Nick Munez. Today on the show, we've got a 5 million copies sold bestseller. This thing is atomic. James Clear is breaking atomic habits. This is a rule book, and we're breaking it down to the new five chapter format, short and sweet. As a rule, I don't drink. As a habit, I do. <laughs> You're looking for surefire ways to break your nail-biting habit today. Take up plumbing. Seriously, he says if you're having trouble changing your habits, the problem isn't you, it's your system. Socrates has taught us in like 10 books, systems are sacred. James quote, bad habits repeat themselves again and again, not because you don't want to change, but because you have the wrong systems for change. I can't trust the metric system, because I haven't walked 1,600 meters in their shoes. <laughs> A mile. Throughout your life, you don't as much rise to the next level as you find out the next system that's going to bring you up, and these things take time. James, he's one of these stoic alchemists out here, and he's totally putting his system out there for us to grub off of. What did the fat boy atomic bomb say to the little man atomic bomb? Nuke. I am your father. <laughs> a couple nights ago, a hypnotist convinced me I was a soft, malleable metal with an atomic weight of 82. I'm easily led. <laughs> These habits, they're explosively effective. James says he's derived them from biology, psychology, and neuroscience. It's brain hacking. We're going to shorten it down, sweeten it up, so we're not talking about chemicals. Quote, along the way, readers will be inspired and entertained from true stories of Olympic gold medalists, award-winning artists, business leaders, life-saving physicians, and star comedians who have used the science of small habits to master their craft and vault to the top of their field. I think the music field should get Bach to basics. <laughs> yeah, we're going to learn about compounding habits and behavioral loops. Which, when a gay man does it, it's called a fruit loop. <laughs> and then he says you're going to learn how to overcome a lack in motivation and bolster your willpower. Get fucking hard! Yeah, I'm going to unleash my inner coach on you guys. Lack of motivation? That's the easiest part. You should be inspired always. It's the discipline, the systems we got to learn. Willpower. That can make you rich if you get in the right person's will. <laughs> You got all kinds of tactics coming up right after a short advertisement. the author james clear check out harry schwann on instagram patreon you're not gonna believe your eyes over there you're seeing my habits morph me and you got a fresh meme video at the top of every single month this book it started with a backstory about james and now this mic is by my face quote on the final day of my sophomore year of high school i was hit in the face by a baseball bat as my classmate took a full swing, the bat slipped out of his hand and came flying towards me, striking me between the eyes. Big yikes. You hate those stories. I, yeah. 
<laughs> they had to get a helicopter to fly him to Cincinnati Hospital. Helicopter, helicopter. And then he forgot four years of his life. Get it? Forgot. But it's a helicopter. 9-11, never forget. Helicopter, helicopter. He started life on the wrong foot. And then he went on to become an all-American baseball player. Dennis in college, he says he was a walk-on. And then he's got to be a starter. Starts the blog, jamesclear.com. Guys, this thing has sold 50 million copies. It's in 50 different languages. This doesn't just happen to books. Either he knows someone inside the publishing industry, or this was actually a pretty good read. How do meth heads finance their habits? The Tooth Fairy. I'm not giving that a soundboard. Wait, I think I just lost an atomic particle. No, I'm positive. One more. What do you do when a scientist dies? Barium. <laughs> we will start this thing after a short advertisement. James Clear Atomic Habits, a summer speed round of Nick's nonfiction. Chapter 1 of 5, Make It Obvious. James starts writing to 5 million people about intuition. Yes. He says a healthcare worker went to a family gathering and she just knew something was wrong. She works in the ER, so she's got this fifth sense for when people are sick. She rushes her father-in-law to the hospital and he was diagnosed with a blocked artery needing immediate surgery. Wow, so nurse chicks can tell by the way you eat a hamburger if your arteries are clogged? He says the healthcare worker for years was around people with unusual blood distribution, which amounted in an intuition. So there's probably, like, your head is swelling, your head gets bigger, your fingers turn into hot dogs. Maybe she doesn't have superpowers. <laughs> I like those other stories about intuition about soldiers who know how to dodge bullets. But yeah, I guess this is interesting too. Quote, the human brain is a predictive machine. It is continuously taking in your surroundings and analyzing the information it comes across. With enough practice, you can pick up on the cues that predict certain outcomes without consciously thinking about it. Automatically, your brain encodes the lessons learned through experience. You see where he's getting with this? Make it obvious your habits will then get learned by your subconscious. And he says, hunger is the easiest habit to explain. Even before you get hungry and your stomach is grumbling, your endorphins drop. You get all cranky. There's all these precognitive symbols that you have. And James, he's wasting half of the first chapter to relearn the word intuition. By 2022, this is a dirty word. Intuition? Web sluts will talk about their fucking crystals all day. <laughs> Dude, girls give you crystals. This is not relevant. I have a trunk full of crystals from past hookups. I'm like Thanos. I could build the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hunger is an easy way to understand your intuition. I got a feeling. Ooh. Your teachers lie to you. You have way more than five senses. This is coming from, like, the book knowledge guy who has all the information. I've read hundreds of books. I'm so smart. <laughs> information is bullshit. Always trust your gut. <laughs> Seriously, stop reading. <laughs> uh, he's saying point number two for this chapter. We could speed up a little bit because Carl Jung, our boy, is covering this. Quote, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Wow. That's a great quote. So you're blaming, oh, I wound up at McDonald's because of fate. Or it's because your unconscious is wildly out of control and you need to discipline that shit. I won't get hard on you too early. <laughs> James quote here, it's basically another paraphrase from Carl Jung. One of our greatest challenges in changing habits is maintaining awareness of what we're actually doing. This helps explain why the consequences of bad habits can sneak up on us. You always have to be cognizant and uh, paying attention. It's annoying. <laughs> if biting your nails caused a hangover, 
it would be easier to quit. That was my note. It definitely deserves a sound effect. Seriously, like, not everything is as obvious as drinking where you feel bad after. <laughs> the older you get, the more obvious that is, too. Drinking wrecks your fucking week. This guy is saying just, like, think of everything as having its own hangover. What did Abraham Lincoln say when he woke up with a hangover? I freed who? <laughs> After you learn his, like, cult fundamentals here, the wisdom and the intuition, your habit scorecard, it's actually a pretty good, if you want to join his system, create a over-under, like a golf scorecard of your habits and see if you're netting higher, if you're on par for the week. Bro, that's how businesses keep inventory. Turn yourself into a business, because <laughs> corporations are people. All right, later half of the chapter... He says, I've been doing this every day for five years. Um, people thought I was insane. Yeah, he keeps a scorecard in his pocket. Every time he like eats a healthy food, he checks it off. Start small, and then that scorecard will be in your head. Yo, I used Fujicate for a year. That's a helpful app. He says, the latter two are quite correlated in statistical value. All right, yeah, who cares about your math, bro? A fucking entrepreneurial figure of our age for chapter one is Rob Deerdeck. Have you seen this guy? He makes a scorecard for life quantifying happiness. <laughs> and you know, he goes and builds skate parks for kids. He says he's able to like test run how many times he gets happy. And it's weird how many blowjobs he gets from Chanel West Coast. Rob Deerdeck is awesome. He's kick flipping into a world of positivity. <laughs> He drew out some fun, like, uh, floor plans for your apartment. If you're feeling stale, change things up. I don't know how that really fits into your make it obvious chapter. But yeah, feng shui is <laughs> good for you. I have written on my whiteboard, cleanliness is next to godliness. Don't be a fucking slob. <laughs> Last quote. The people with the best self-control are typically the ones who need to use it the least. It's easier to practice self-restraint when you don't have to use it very often. So yes, perseverance, grit, and willpower are essential to success, but the way to improve these qualities is by creating a more disciplined environment. Turn your hose into a Buddhist monastery. <laughs> Yo, I just scrolled down. I'm seeing a lot of new sound effects. Let me hear some of these. Hey, Quandale Dingle here. <laughs> okay, chapter two, Atomic Habits. Let's go. This is a hype episode. Love you, boys. See you. Ready? <laughs> Atomic Habits this is when he really puts it out there. He says, in the sport of professional cycling, the UK team has won only one Olympic medal. And this sport has been going on for like 110 years. <laughs> Dave Brailsford, he was the new performance of director in 2003. Here was the quote. The whole principle came from the idea that if you broke down everything, you could think of that goes into riding a bike. Shut up, man. So this guy is in control of the UK biking team, won them their first championship in 100 years. And what he did was take apart the bike and look at every single piece and figure out how he could improve it 1% every day. So the ship of Theseus. You're pointless. <laughs> you, we've read all this. <laughs> Plato, it's all there. Um, you improve yourself 1% every day, and by the end of the year, you're three times the man. You just keep getting more powerful. Let's go. Quote, they redesigned the bike seats to make them more comfortable and rubbed alcohol on the tires for a better grip. This sounds like cheating. They asked riders to wear electrically heated overshorts to maintain ideal muscle temperature. Oh, they had these biofeedback sensors. This is future sports right here. Scrap the Olympics. Let's start this thing over with steroids, with bionic arms. It's getting boring. <laughs> Bionicle Olympics. Yeah, don't expect you're going to, like, revolutionize a sport. you got to improve it one step at a time. Qu 
quote, they even painted the inside of the team truck white, which helped them spot little bits of dust that could degrade the performance of finely tuned bikes. <laughs> dust particles. And, like, uh, let's go back to hangovers. That's a lot of dust on your machine. And you just learn to drink less and you still get as drunk and all that. Ending that guy's storyline, five years later, it was the Beijing Olympics. They took home 60% of the medals. You know, everyone thinks success is achieved by one giant leap for mankind. It's small adjustments. James explains what an atomic habit is here. Um, meanwhile, improving by 1% isn't particularly notable. Sometimes it isn't even noticeable, but it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. The difference is a tiny improvement can make over time is astounding. We're doing a marathon out here, people. If you're sprinting, you're going to friggin' tie yourself out. We don't miss weeks, baby. Four years straight, that's how you have to take your habits. Whatever it is you do, you don't miss. The hardest thing you do, this is fucking you from now on. Start running or something. I know you guys have it in you. <laughs> you yeah, and you're not going to notice this on the day-to-day. -day. That's the most frustrating part. You want to see results quick, but then you hit plateaus. Quote, the same way that money manipulates through compound interest, the effects of your habits multiply as you repeat them. An atomic habit, he's saying, is one of these exponential habits. Quote, they seem to make little difference on any given day, and yet the impact they deliver over the months and years can be enormous. Like smokers say, I wish I never started the first cigarette. That's a negative compounding interest. <laughs> it just gets worse and worse and worse. You got to look at that angle too to kind of scare you into line. But that's not the right fuel. Bro, it makes you enormous. Reading 40 pages a day. Oh my god, I'm fucking, it feels useless every single day. What I just read about torture and pain. But over the time, you're learning how to fucking learn systems and all that. Go outside and read. Those are my only two tips. If I want to try to like get that exact algebra out of what he's saying, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits. I'm going to fucking say it again because that's just MX plus B right there. The outcomes are, of your life are a lag. It's a foresight fucking I'm not putting this good <laughs> but your habits are your life in the grander scheme and we just can't zoom out enough and see it when we're in the rut so if you're like you're wondering why you're falling short for your goals in the long term you got to tweak your habits rather than tweaking your goals you could get to that goal but you need a different habit it's fucking stupid to do the same thing over and over. So, like, you're thinking, this kid isn't successful. Why would I ever fucking li I have all the information. That's why you should fucking listen, bitch. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't have a lot of money because, admittedly, I'm not chasing that. I fucking chase clout and stuff. But if you are chasing money every single day, is doing the same thing getting you there? Learn how to day trade stocks if you're not brave enough to move your job right now. Period. We're getting hard today. Very stoic summary quote. Time magnifies the margin between success and failure. It will multiply whatever you feed it. Good habits make time your ally. Bad habits make time your enemy. Oh. You're in the middle of a drinking binger. And you think, <laughs> like a week from now, I'm going to feel like a zombie. But when you're going to the gym, dude, a week from now... You're going to feel like Hercules. And to make things even harder, he's saying you have to continuously refine your habits. You're never going to hit the perfect scorecard. It just keeps going and going. <laughs> so you got to frame it in your mind. You could keep getting better and better. He says your body naturally wants to rest, but you got to push it harder past your comfort zone. Yeah, he's spending time with bikers. It's the only way to get bigger. Just keep fucking being in pain <laughs> he says every habit is a seed and you want to grow it into a strong oak see he's doing every he's going thorough on us i love that how ideas are seeds and turn that shit into an actual plant 
He says, if you're a musician, your goal is to create a ballad for a generation. So your system is how often you practice. And so just break it down into measures so it doesn't seem as big. Takes it a step further. If you need a single goal met, just continue to improve your system 1%. Yep, keep repeating yourself, James Clear. He started fucking talking about Vegas. Did you hear what happened when Vegas opened the Lego store? People were lined up for blocks. (laughs) Okay, he ends the chapter saying habits can help you achieve all of these things but fundamentally they are not about having something they are about becoming someone Woo! that's the juice right there you're not gonna have something work on becoming the thing you want to and then you'll have all the riches that your heart desires I was craving a soda this morning but I couldn't afford one I was so depressed <laughs> Chapter 3, Make It Attractive. He starts this with a more complicated version of Pavlov's dog. So you're smart because you make things more confusing. (laughs) You ring the bell and then your brain starts to salivate. So make your brain salivate over pain, over things that are going to grow you. He's saying... um, Use, uh, like, the red dot pointer in your mind. This was a terrible fucking example. You're using a cat laser pointer for Pavlov's dog? Just reiterate the greats, bro. Stop trying to fucking confuse everyone. Yo, I think when a Hindu man goes to the beach, he's got that red dot on the forehead. (laughs) All the seagulls dive bomb him. That would have been a funnier joke if I said he was at the zoo and the lion pounces on him. Quote... It's the brain of each animal preloaded with certain rules of behavior that when it comes across an exaggerated version of that rule, it lights up like a Christmas tree. Scientists refer to these exaggerated cues as supernormal stimuli. Great. Scientists are getting into the paranormal now. And if you talk about it, you're crazy. (laughs) So supernormal stimuli. When you do something that you know your brain is growing... It lights up like a Christmas tree, he said. It's the best feeling ever. (laughs) My favorite ice cream flavor is death by chocolate. It satisfies my two cravings at once. (laughs) (laughs) That's what lights up most people's brain, a fucking pint of Ben and Jerry's. You gotta like cold turkey the ice cream. Uh, That's the best treat to binge on, an ice ice cream sandwich because you got cookies and ice cream. Yeah, he wasted 10 pages here saying, the more experience you have, the harder your supernormal stimuli is. I think, like, the more you go into weird situations, the more of your brain turns on. That's what he's saying as a neuroscientist here. The epigenetics, if you go into the fucking tundra, immediately you wake up and all your natives are saying, build a shelter. Uh, He's saying, yeah, wasting more pages... (laughs) I talk about food a lot. That's what all of this is. It's super hard to get off of junk food because it's like synthetically packed with calories. That's what happens when you watch a video of someone climbing a mountain rather than doing it yourself. You're getting this synthetic hit. Quote, Look around. Society is filled with highly engineered versions of reality that are more attractive than the world our ancestors evolved in. Stores feature mannequins with exaggerated hips and breasts to sell clothes. Social media delivers more likes and praise in a few minutes than we could get in the office or at home. Like he said in chapter one, you have to manipulate your environment to make you stronger. And our environment, don't make me go off on this. It makes you a bitch! Everything about it. (laughs) You see, I'm living it now. Get the fuck outside, it'll make you hard in all aspects of your life. You want fucking social praise? Come get your fake Chinese followers on TikTok. (laughs) It'll hit that bliss point in your brain. Just rewire it right. We're going to do a book about, like, how technology fucks your mind up. And think about how, like, porn has fucked up an entire generation of this. (laughs) They're saying in the UK they're going to start paying people to have kids. It's all a trap, man. The ultimate point here mid-chapter is making it attractive. you got to make your suffering more attractive than whatever Silicon Valley is selling you. 
and they they have social engineers on this man they make it really fucking attractive you have to be stronger five media conglomerates are going to control the five lobes of your mind that's a scientific joke he says you're more likely to find a behavior attractive if you get to do one of your favorite things at the same time i think they call this positive coupling or just get fucking disciplined rather than eating chocolate while you're taking a walk get disciplined fuck motivation Quote, in many ways, these social norms are the invisible rules that guide your behavior each day. The fact that you go to the break room and they got a dozen donuts waiting out there for you. He says you're always keeping them in mind, even if at the top of your mind you follow the habits, the culture without thinking. Yeah. It's uh, hard to get outside of the, the beast, the obese beast machine. No sound effect for that shit. Yeah, what, you're going to get on antidepressants to be happy just like the rest of society? (laughs) You got to change your habits. This started with Pavlov. I heard that guy had attractive hair. It must have been from all of that conditioning. (laughs) Chapter 4. This is the second to last. Make it easy. Look! It's been two years, Daddy. (laughs) This whole chapter, he says, is walk slowly, but never backwards. So you see he's already fucking reiterating 1% a day. Quote, It is easy to get bogged down trying to find the optimal plan for change. The fastest way to lose weight, the best program to build muscle, the perfect idea for a side hustle. We are so focused on figuring out the best approach that we never get around to taking action. As Voltaire once wrote, the best is the enemy of the good. Oh, man! This is why Dostoevsky is better than Nietzsche. You have to be great. Everything has to be perfect. Just be good. If everyone was better than 50%, we would be on a better trajectory. The best is the enemy of the good. We need a Voltaire kick on here. Keep making progress. He says, uh, you got to be your own cheerleader. Literally. I guess in my mind, I'm just an abusive coach. But if you're able to uh, be positive, I bet that's better. (laughs) Yeah, he's like, uh, the cheering and the practicing, you need it, but it doesn't matter. That's the whole thing. Nobody, stop with the talk, right? You just gotta start doing. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to take a fucking turn against him here, just because he keeps saying the same shit. Take this, James Clear. Habits are masturbation. Doing the same thing over and over and over. You need a margin of growth. You gotta change your habits. Fuck your book. Atomic habits atomically change the things you do. Next bestseller. I just, you know, his point is that habits make you better. I'm offering a 50% self boost. (laughs) My 50 50 philosophy. If you guys just fucking try something that you're probably going to fail at, the time that you succeed it, you make a much bigger jump than these little fucking habits. Quote, it's easy to be in motion and convince yourself that you're still making progress. You think, I've got conversations going with four potential clients right now. This is good. We're moving in the right direction. Motion isn't always progress. You got to be aware of which way you're trending. (laughs) Quote, the spread of agricultural provides an example of third law of behavioral change on a global scale. Conventional wisdom holds that motivation is the key to habit change. Maybe if you really wanted it you'd actually do it but the truth is our real motivation is to be lazy and to do what is convenient (laughs) and despite what the latest productivity bestseller will tell you this is a smart strategy not a dumb one damn you know if you really wanted it you'd actually do it the truth is that everybody just really wants to be lazy and so we're all finding different ways to that path (laughs) for real like you want to act like you're a big hustler now that you have money making money for you 
Bigger quote, in a sense, every habit is just an obstacle to getting what you really want. Dieting is an obstacle to getting fit. Meditation is an obstacle to feeling calm. Journaling is an obstacle to thinking clearly. You don't actually want the habit itself. You want what really comes at the end, what the habit delivers. That's why I'm saying motivation is flimsy. You're going to wake up some days and not care about your habits. What you got to keep in mind is the end goal. That's why you're disciplined. Yeah, dude. He's talking about the Japanese third wave of production. They called it lean production. What, you fucking sip on lean <laughs> at the Toyota factory? Okay. Yeah, he's bringing us back to the magic word we keep hearing. Focus and intuition. Which are kind of opposites, but you need both. Let's get to the end of this chapter. He said the two-minute rule. I like it better than the five-minute rule. It's uh, if you have a task that isn't that hard, you do it for five minutes and then you can stop. But once you start for five minutes, you're going to finish the task. And he says just do it for two minutes <laughs> because once you get started, it's never hard to finish something. That's a lie. Get started, though. Notorious story in the literature verse. Victor Hugo. This guy was being pressed by publishers in 1831. They gave him like six months to get it out, and he spent his entire life procrastinating it. Hugo pumped out the hunchback of Notre Dame in that 1831 six months. Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, sometimes fucking crunch time really helps. So set that up for yourself. Different systems work for different people. So like we said at the beginning of the chapter, just start trying different systems. Stop procrastinating. I have that on my whiteboard too. Don't hesitate. You miss windows of opportunity. I don't want to waste your time with stories, but that's a big one. Don't fucking hesitate. What's the risk in trying to help people with a commitment issue? They never show up. That sucked. You know what two institutions require commitment? Marriage and insanity. <laughs> Chapter 5 from Good to Great. Um, this one is all about having an accountability buddy. Like if you go to AA, they teach you to get rid of your, uh, enablers. So it's the exact opposite. That's all about trying to keep you away from the abyss. And he's saying this will get you to the top of the mountain. Find a climbing buddy, accountability buddy. In general, this is a good rule. I think it's kind of dangerous to just compare yourself to people. Compare yourself to the previous version of yourself. He's going, Olympians have top 1% bodies, but can only compete once they find the activity that suits them. Yeah, there's a lot there. Let's just move on to the next quote. <laughs> Embracing this strategy requires the acceptance of the simple truth that people are born with different abilities. Some people don't like to discuss this fact. Whoa, he just got racist in his last chapter. And James Clear, that is critical race theory. He's a neo-Marxist. But yeah, that's racist to say that we're not all equal. Seriously, Olympians, they could basically do any of the sports. <laughs> they find the one that their body has the one quick twitch muscle for. That's why the decathlon is the only real man. Caitlyn Jenner, let me suck your dick. <laughs> We're off the rails. All this to say that your personality influences your habits. Again, <laughs> find a fucking equally accountable person who wants the activity that both of your bodies are accountable for. It's not that deep. You got to start finding the right fits. Start trying things. He's got a quote about Steve Martin. Here we go. Th from 16 to 34, he spent every night on stage. The quote goes... Ten years spent learning, four years spent refining, and four years spent as a wild success. His the whole thing is find what doesn't feel like work. And then make a master class when you haven't been doing comedy for 20 years. Steve Martin, he said uh, his first years he was on the edge of quitting. Each year he expanded his comedy routine, but only by a minute or two. He was always adding new material, but he also kept a few jokes that were guaranteed to get laughs. They were just enough victories to keep him motivated and just enough mistakes to keep him working hard. It's the DJ Khaled philosophy. 
another one. Every other song is going to bomb, but as long as you keep getting big people and putting your name on it, another one. You are going to succeed. I'm bringing it back, giving you the 50 50 at the end of this episode. Steve Martin, he kept uh, 50% of jokes that would laugh and then 50% uh, he would bomb on. Fucking try things that will get you into that flow state and you are going to get booted out of it. Another quote, the greatest threat to success is not failure, but boredom. Failure keeps you invigorated. We get bored with habits because they stop delighting us. The outcome becomes expected, and our habits become ordinary. We start derailing our progress to seek novelty. <sighs> Apathy is evil. You gotta put the novelty into your own thing, rather than scrolling on Instagram for it. Quote, each of people's teams and companies we have covered has faced different circumstances, but ultimately progressed in the same way. Through a commitment to tiny, sustainable, unrelenting improvement. That's the secret right there. I think there's an entire book called The Secret. I'm out of breath. That's it. Sustainable, unrelenting improvement. You are unfucking shakable. Once you get it in your mind that nothing's going to stop your growth. Woo! That's the secret, baby. Nothing's going to stop you once you start growing. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> Why did the cannibal go to the marathon? To get some fast food. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with a final quote rather than a joke this time. It's remarkable what you can build if you don't stop. It's remarkable the business you can build if you just don't stop working. It's remarkable the body you can build if you don't stop training. It's remarkable the knowledge you can build if you just don't stop learning. It's remarkable the fortune you can build. It's remarkable the friendships you can build if you don't stop caring. Small habits don't add up. They compound. Atomic habits, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. Thank you for joining. I hope some of you gleaned some helpful advice from this one. Optimize your habits. Start trying new things. Keeping this three-year streak alive. We don't miss... I'm not going anywhere, people. I'm going to keep getting better, and I'm going to keep trying to give all of you the information that I can in the shortest, most digestible format. Hit up the Patreon if you guys want to stretch it out and hang for one time a month. What do we got coming up next week for the YouTube, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Lenny Bruce, How to Talk Dirty. Yeah, Dean Martin, you could chip away one minute worth of jokes per year. Lenny is about teaching us the art of the hot take. Everything at once. Get your premises right, Lao Tzu. <laughs> this is the comedy versary. It's a don't miss edition. Definitely gonna be a fun one. That's gonna bring us to the end of today's episode. Guys, I love you all. End off July with some fun. Summer is in full force. <laughs> I can feel the excitement. We'll be back with a weekend edition something special and let me get a random soundboard effect to take this home random hey that's pretty good that was pretty good see you guys in seven short days my name nick Munis signing off love you all see you then peace